Welcome back to another segment of the Dream Army. Today, rather than bore you with more customizations, for now we're gonna paint some of the we're gonna paint our all our room father on Magna Droth today. So um yeah, so we're just gonna get dive into this and paint all these little sections and this is the first thing I'm painting on this army, so it's gonna kinda be like us figuring out where the paint goes and like like how we want the metals to be and stuff like that. We've already shown that our main paint colors for our army are going to be probably like this scarlet for the the reds, like the cloaks and stuff like that. Um, we have a silver for all the armory bits. And what was, there was one more color. Oh, like a blue for the other bits. And we'll probably be using this um, Prussian blue for that. So like, those are like our main three colors for the army. Uh, and then like the little details, of course, we're gonna have browns and stuff for for um, leather and all those kind of bits. And then like for this darker chainmail stuff, we'll probably use like the um, the bolt gun colors from, uh, was it bolt gun? No, you know what I mean, this one, gun metal for uh, some of the darker grays, I mean, stuff like that. So let's get started. I think the best place to start is gonna be this bear. Um, getting this guy at least base coated right now because then we're gonna, to, we're gonna do layers of browns on him. So we'll start with our darkest brown, which is this leather brown. Um, I think that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, let's start with this. I don't, I don't feel a lot of paint in here. Um, but I do have another leather brown, but they look very different in color, which is weird. So let's just start with this leather brown, and maybe, huh? maybe not use this leather brown. Oh, there we go. So we're gonna use a bigger brush on this on this big boy uh, to get most of the fur coated. Um, we're gonna avoid the mouth area there because we're going to be using whites and stuff in there. Uh, I primered these, this part black, the bear black, and then the uh, saddle part black, and then the guy white because I think the the colors we're gonna be using for our people are are very light colors, so we want a light undertone. Um, but for these guys, we were going to use darker paints, so it's okay to have this dark undercoat on it. And also, my um, like paint can exploded when I was using it. Though, uh, we'll paint that. My uh, my white primer kind of exploded when I was using it, which is weird. I never had that happen before. Um, it's just been sitting in my paint drawer for a while, um, but that shouldn't have affected it really at all, but the little cap that you spray with popped off, and then I tried to put a new cap on it, and it just pierced something, and it just started spraying everywhere, um, right at the beginning of me trying to prime too, so I kind of just took the guy and held him into it, and I was like, all right, let's go, and then so you can see it's really spotty on him. Um, but I mean, it got the coverage on what we needed to be white for the most part. Um, but that was a was a new experience. Um, so we're just going at this model and getting all the big surfaces painted with this brown, and then we'll let it uh, dry and move on to another section and then we'll come back and start dry brushing onto it, other browns, um, to get more definition of ju than just, you know, one color brown on the bear. You could also make it like a polar bear. That would have been, that might be cool, but you know, polar bears aren't this furry. Who, who knows? Who knows what a fantasy polar bear looks like? Maybe a fantasy polar bear is furry. It's up to you to make those decisions. But then, you know, we run into that whole thing with the white paint again. And I don't have any more, so... And my airbrush is being 
so dumb. So we have some we have some some glitches here going on at Drum War Gaming. But you know, I ordered a cleaning kit for the airbrush and hopefully that'll help me get it all figured out. Cause it's not cool. It's just acrylic paint kind of dries. Like you can see my palette over here, like it's just like rubbery uh, grossness. So if you don't clean the airbrush out all the way, which you know I couldn't without the right stuff, so I didn't have those tools to do it. There's just a lot of gunk that gets stuck inside your airbrush, and future you is left to deal with it when it's hardened. It's not fun. Hoping you guys are enjoying this series. Um, I'm definitely enjoying putting it together and building my guys, which, you know, was that? <laughs> Basically, is what this channel is for anyway. So, I'm not gonna be able to get really in there right now, but. Get his paws. Right on here. Hopefully, I don't need. Well, I have another brown that I can use for other things, but we gotta get this bear fully coated in this brown before we move on to that other tube of leather brown. Um, and it'll be fine because we know that we can't. that our bear is done, so at least we got that done. Ooh, this hurting my shoulder. This is a big old model. I would definitely probably airbrush something like this uh, and then just like, you know, quickly switch out the colors and let the, the like in the pot and not clean out the pot and let the pot um, kind of blend all the colors together more. Um, you know, but like I said about the airbrush earlier, so. But if you're doing something like this at home, painting big, big old models, for sure, just use an airbrush. Or better yet, if you have, uh, I mean, probably not better yet, but works for me is like a, a rattle can of that color, um, like a brown can, like spray paint can. And then just spray the model with that as your base, as your base primer, because like I said, like you know, I'm a fan of primering the color, a color pretty close to what you're gonna end up with, um, especially when working with like yellows and blues and stuff like that. You should probably do that. Um, but you know, just that just speeds up the process. Otherwise, you know, you're just doing this for ten minutes. <laughs> but. You know, it's just all about making your life easier for yourself. And stretching your paint as far as it can go, you know? Especially getting in those like, these like hard to reach areas with this brush is pretty difficult. But it's okay that we have some black showing and that you know that kind of gives us more like shadows and stuff for the model oh, let me get more comfortable here Here. 
Rawr. Okay, so that does it for the, the brown. So we'll let that set up more. Brush, and then we'll move on to this guy while we are kind of setting that set up. Now, I'm realizing that I'm holding him, and I should probably have him on something. I'm going to clip up this little alligator clip um, to help me maneuver him around. I'll take this off it, though, so I have a little thing. Okay, so we'll start with our guy. Um, as usual, we're starting with the flesh color, so we're going to use this Gulliman's Flesh Contrast Paint. It's my new favorite thing to do for for flesh tones on my models. Um, just gives me a smoother, better, better coverage than paint. also been painting some stuff up in the spare time for some Christmas presents for people. I've been 3D printing some some things that I've designed and painting those up, seeing how those turn out, and I think they're gonna be pretty sweet Christmas presents um, for some people. Maybe get in there. No, it's like pretty far in there. Okay, that gets our flesh done. Now let's go to the silver armor because that's like the next layer up. It looks like. Um, I mean, actually, let's look at let's really examine this guy. So, silver armor, silver armor, in there with. Lots of like bits on it. Hmm. It's our Space Marine arm that we've <laughs> changed. We'll probably do like gold highlights on those things, not just flat silver. So we're getting our silver again. Because we want those like really bright colors for this army. We're not going for a super dark. Spreading that around. I don't know if that's watery or if that's my brush. And we'll cover all the all the bits. So we're definitely gonna have to do some edge work on all these things with like the blue that we're gonna be using and Stuff like that to help call these colors out a lot more. Because um, right now they're not popping. like a whole base coat of him with this all his like under armor bits and stuff he's probably too bright to see on camera right now just hold him by his head I'll do this part so he doesn't flop around so much. I'll have to wait for the contrast to dry a bit more before we can fully cover all these areas. Just fine though. Let's get the helmet. I 
I don't know what color I'm going to wash this. Probably the black, but it might darken it too much. We'll see. There's all the silvery bits, minus like what's hit with the contrast right now that I can't go over like this little arm bracelet and stuff and this little part of the head, but we'll get we'll get back there. Um, A little bit better. Okay, so that should cover that. I should have like a little, a little thingy to stab the these into and hold them better while I'm working. Uh, let me see if I can add a thing of paper clips that I can use for. That you've been using for um, pins before I got the brass rod, so we'll just take that and we'll take this. That way we'll have it easier for this to kind of sit in a place where we need to move it. Okay, so now let's work on these reds with our scarlet paint. I get this whole cape here. Just gonna concentrate and pull these colors into here. We've already hit our armor in some spots, which is fine. We'll fix it. We can probably hold in by here for now to get under here. That gets that all taken care of. Now we gotta work on this mohawk a bit. I get some of the red showing into here. Actually, we can probably do the whole thing because I think the blue is darker, so. We're gonna do blue and red striped mohawks versus like the red and black. But we'll base it in this red. Does it keep trying to focus?
up in a second. Now let's also maybe point this more. I want like this little piece here to be red because their cloth, the bulk of their cloth is red. So we want that. But then we're gonna outline all this in blue. I think that would look pretty cool. So we clean that up. Okay. Let's get our smaller brush. If I can find it in this mess. Right here, and we'll take our Prussian blue. And we'll start going on to the little corner pieces. little dot on it because it helps with the with the panel lining Take your time and go at it at your own pace. Make sure you get a nice stable grip. stuff in a minute. I think that's going to work for what we got. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any like little little things I can do to add more color. Um, we'll do that separate. So that will cover that stuff. Um, we'll just get switched to the bigger brush now. Get a good amount, healthy amount of paint on there. And add our stripes in. Just keep dipping and putting on new coats of this. This red's not quite dry yet, but it's kind of awkward to hold it at this angle.
aqui. Well, here we'll dig dip back in into the silver and clean up those areas that are have a, have some over paint on them. Let's clean that up. Okay. So now we'll go to like a goldy, a go the golden detail. Actually, no, we can probably, that's just probably dry. So let's see if we can clean up the rest of this contrast paint that was on here. And we can get the stuff that was on the wrist here. Clean that guy up. Okay, now let's go to the gold details here. Let me set this on here for a second. Uh, let's find our gold. Open bronze. No, 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 no. Let's call. Here we go. Glorious gold. Need to buy more of this too. Oh no. Please don't be dried out. Okay, so we're gonna ignore the glorious gold and we'll get it like we do with our normal stuff with the brassy brass and then we'll do a wash of the Reichland flesh to really get the, the gold on. That stuff was a lot watery too, so I don't think that would have turned out very well. So let's get some of this on our brush here, our little brush, and then there's like little details in here and we just wanna kinda Outline them. I think once we wash this too, it'll bring a lot more detail out. And what we can see here. It's an awkward hole to have on this guy because he doesn't have a base. He is a bear. Lots of little markings and whatnot. So we'll just kind of pulling some of those out just to give a little bit more variation.
Mm. And while we're there, while we have this color, we'll take the brass and coat this whole thing. We're gonna do like reverse what we did with the other metal on him. Like we're gonna do mostly gold for his weapon and then silver details. For his latch key grand X. If you want this to be silver, the I mean these to be and there to be this color, so we're just kinda doing a rough coat of it. Okay. Oh, there was one more spot there. Oh, yeah. Go back to our we forgot to get his little wrist piece here. There we go. And then a little ruin on the jacket, I mean on the keep that we're going to get to. That, same thing. We'll just line, the, we're going to line this whole thing in the silver also, now that it's had time to dry. And there's like a like that. He's got like a little belt and stuff in there. We'll get the leather around it. The leather brown that we didn't use on the bear. And there's like a little pouch right here. And then he's got like a belt. Right here. Okay. And then ooh, more silver. So there's some more detail in here. So let's just pull that out. Okay. And then we will get him over here. Our 
gun metal to finish off the axe. The sections trying to avoid hitting those little details that we got in the middle, but I've already hit. <laughs> Should we get the bottoms and the top here? for that let's get this guy we'll call out like any more details and stuff that we want to with this color on here like we'll, we'll break up some of the some of the patterns and stuff on here so it's not just like one color of a I think that's fine for that let's do just paint this whole thing, this whole kind of dwarf head with this color. Okay. Good, good, good. So let's color that in. All right. Now we got to get the beard most important part of the dwarf we're going with a gray beard because he is we're gonna do this medium sea gray he's the an older leader of the dwarves um so he's gonna have a gray beard and we'll do some dry brushing with that too once it dries to get it more light so we're just starting with our medium sea gray for our base coat switch to a smaller brush so we don't ruin everything that we've done so far Looks like that's part of the helmet that I've missed. So we'll go back through and get this silver. And use it to get that little cheek armor painted. Go back to our gray.
going to preserve his defined nose as much as possible. Side here. Let's get all the bits painted that you could possibly see to just get the best coverage you can. here and then we've recolored here get the spot that we've accidentally touched there okay so let's let that dry so we can go to our other steps um, so while that's drying, we'll go to this guy. The whole thing is pretty much made out of stone. So we're going to use this medium sea gray that we've been using on the beard of our guy to get this kind of blocked out. for our furnace and stuff. Probably find a better way to hold it. here just doing a very quick and dirty job of coating this we'll hold this because that's going to be a silver color so spots don't really have to get the bottom because we're gluing that on to the bear That is now base coated, more or less, mostly less. And now we'll let that dry. While that's drying, we will get back to the bear, which we're gonna go with a dry brush of whole red to give it some more reddish tones in its fur. Um, 
And if you're asking if I had a paint plan, not really. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. Um, so, yeah, like, yeah, that's very obvious. So just go with the fur and just brush the color on. Getting the areas. Keep dry brushing this color. Yeah, we have a lot on here still. And the cats are going crazy. spots with this. Okay, so that gives it that kind of a look to it. We're just going to start lightening this guy up now. Uh, we're going to go to a like a tannish brown color now uh, with probably this. This might be too much. Let me see. Don't I have a? I think I have like a beastly brown or something in here. Mm, I think it's like a spray color though. Is it? Nope. Uh, I need to organize my paints better. Monster brown. Here we go. I'll take this color. This monster brown from Army Painter. Get all the water out of this or something? I don't know what's going on in here. There we go. And we're just gonna keep, keep on keeping on on this. So now we go from our old color to this color. Looks a lot different in person than it does on there. Um, but let's just keep bringing down 
the colors here. Okay, so that brings down that some more. Now let's get some some serious con contrast and stuff in here to break up these this darker tone. So let's go to a gray. Um, I'm gonna go to this ghost gray um, to pop it more. Let's take it. And we'll just try to try to hit the. Oops, that's still too much on there. So let's just. Oof. It's too much right now. Um, and my napkin is wet, so I'll use my hand. Oof. It's gonna be a polar bear anyway. No. We'll just kind of lightly use this over the bear, getting just like the very, very high spots. you know our leader is an old man and he is an old bear that he has fought with through his his time as leader of the dwarf my my band of fire slayers So that's gonna break this up even more so we can see what's going on here. Now let's set him over there. Well that's set there. We can just do some take the same color and just what's left on our brush just hit what's left of here. So this should give this guy should have had plenty of time to get dry. So we're just gonna finish off his beard. He's got like some some gold in there. Some little thingies. Just paint those thingies. Cool. And then we'll take our ghost gray that we have that we're using for a dry brush and we'll pick out some strands of hair in of his to kind of bring him into old age some more. Now for washing. Let's wash this guy and see what happens. Let's take our gnome oil wash. 
I think that's the one we're going to go for most of this stuff, um, for the met metal anyway, um, just to dirty it up but not lose the color as much. Um, let's go. Mm -hmm. The legs. pad here. And go for his little wrist thingy and the shoulder pad up here. Then the hat. And then we'll get the beard. First, let's just hit these little spots right here. This guy. We're good. This guy. Don't want to get where it's wet right now, so it's still pretty wet in there. So we want to be careful. So we'll wait. We'll wait on the beard, the rest of the beard for now. But this is what he's coming along looking like. Now for the red, I'm gonna do what I've been doing and use contrast paints for for washes. We're gonna see kind of how that works on this or doesn't work. So I got a Blood Angels Red contrast paint. Shake that guy up. And we're gonna put it on the cape and then like and the mohawk and like the other red armor bits that we have on him. So that's gonna super pump it up and make it a, little, a lot more vibrant. Try to avoid hitting this metallic. We can go over it. It's fine. Let's go over it. It'll probably be better if we go back over it later with the, the silver again. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna cover this. Let's grab him up here really quick while we get in here. Get in all those little folds. Clip back on. A little bit to go on. Ooh, didn't want that to happen. So, gear. Get your brush wet. Get all that shit off of it. And then just dry brush into there to get it the best you can, and we'll have to re hit it later. Our 
push into here. Push into here. And that gives us some really nice reds with some darks on there and stuff now. So it's not just a flat red. It's got folds in it. Um, now we gotta go to our Reichland flesh. If we can find it um, here. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Now we're gonna wash our golds. Uh, they're bronze, but we're gonna make them gold with this Reichland flesh. It's gonna bring out those colors a lot more, make them a lot more shiny. Dwarves do like their, their shiny gold. Underneath here, let's get. That stuff here, get in there. Get the little spots on here. As well as some of it up in there on the goals that we were doing earlier. Okay. You can see he's all bright and shiny. I'll let that dry before we can fix some of those mistakes that we made. I don't know if you can tell, but I've been like avoiding doing this part. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> um, so in order to not have a ton of light gray type colors on here, we're going to be using our bronze to get instead of our silver on some of this just to break it up a bit more, get some variation, you know, really help sell that this guy is the leader of the army. So let's go there. I think the can paint it in there too to do on the other side as well, but for now let's just get his little engine for his for his fire. A little smokestack. This guy painted, and then paint the horn itself. And then, no, that's going to be silver because that's what it is kind of on the other guy. And then here, like our axe is on our guy, this the handles will be this gold as well as like their inside details but for the get that one here oops sure I didn't okay Okay, and then for here, 
same kind of deal. We just kind of pick out a few areas that we want to be gold. I think we're going to go with like this whole thing here up to here. This is our, remember this is our flamethrower for the dragon, because it says dragon, it's supposed to be a dragon. So he has a flame breath and this is going to be our flame breath. Okay. And then we get to our metallic colors. See what I meant about not wanting them all to be, this whole thing to be washed out with metallic colors. Because I knew this is what we were going to get. Um, Do like just pick out some details on here, something there, this whole thing is metal because it's an anvil kind of built into the rock of this saddle. Flip it around. I painted uh, as well as like some of the little stuff here. Um, I want these frames to be metallic. Get some of this detail in here as well as some of these pipey bits this side of the bits that we called out in there. Let's go back over here, get, it, oh, the, get our frames here. As well as getting our oven here. Then we will kind of do some stuff here. Let's take this. Red means fire. <laughs> so we'll make the pose red. And then the saddle. Well, actually, we'll take the most of this red. this guy with it. We're gonna work fast while this is wet so coat that with the red. Get us some orange which I don't have any. No I do. Here it is. This orange fire. Get some of that out. Get it on our brush, wipe some of it off, and get more in here. Just kind of sprinkle it in there into the red. Remember, this red's really wet right now, so it's gonna kind of it's called wet blending, I think. But you know, it's a, this is a lot um, more shitty version of that. So. at the bottom here okay and then get a yellow use this one the moon dust this yellow is the only yellow that hasn't hurt me yet uh, and then we'll just get kind of like the end here There, and then when 
that dries, it'll appear much more fiery than it does right now. <laughs> okay, so now we're just gonna paint the little settle piece that he sits on with the blue. Little guy here. Go like that. And there is our saddle for the most part, minus the wash, of course. Oh, no, it's not. Hold on. I lied. We have. God, this fucking thing is wet as shit. All right. Let's get our brown and then just paint our little leather straps here. Um, as well as any kind of straps in here that may be holding these together. I think it's kind of just that. Um, as well as, um, where is it? Oh no, I lost it. I lost it. Um, yeah. We'll go back to some gunmetal color here. And then get the back side of these axes that we missed because they are so small. My battery is dying in my phone, so this might be another gargantuan type video where I to pause it and then I will show you like a cutaway when it's done but until then I mean we're almost done so maybe we can stretch it out we're gonna push it and just stab this thing into this little poster tack there okay now let's get our regular brush and our bear and his saddle will be red. He is a royal bear. A little bridle or whatever the saddle attaches to. Same thing here, we're going to be gluing the, the saddle thingy on top of it, so you don't have to be getting too much of the inside in here. In and up close, you can see this detail. It's not mega detailed in here. It's just I just poked a pencil in there to get the little ring shape that I wanted for the chainmail on there. Mm 
Ok. Now we take our gun metal, which we already straight out here. Just gotta find it again. Here it is. And then we will. Brush those areas. Same thing with the dot there. There's a buckle down here that we're gonna also paint. Now we got to get our matte white for the teeth, claws, and eyes. I think, although for the eyes, I think I might do something different, but we'll see. And while that's wet, we'll take our red, kind of get the gums section of the teeth uh, blocked in so that it kind of gets a pink to it. the gums. Although I'm not an expert on gums of bears, they might be black. <laughs> but this is what we did. <laughs> Let's also clean up there because I don't We'll make it, we'll clean it. We'll clean it, we'll clean it. Then we're gonna kind of dry brush the claws with the white. Make him kind of like a use this toxic mist. Let's make him like a ethereal bear. So let's take this blue. details uh, like his nose and stuff we'll use black for that
Okay. Let's go back to washes. We'll get our known oil. Go to this guy. Should just have it on here the whole time. <laughs> um, and we're gonna wash the bulk of this with it. Blacks. The blues. And just keep going across the whole thing. I like this side more that was stuck to the the raft or, that I had printed on it. It makes it look a little bit better. Um, this is not sticking very well because the front end and I can't hold it anymore. Ugly. All right, well, no, that's not what you want to have happen, but thankfully you can get it with your finger. Start from down here. sit down while it dries as best it can so I don't have to use it. Let's get our room father here. Let's get his ooh what was that? What was that red from? We're just falling apart here. Like most of our videos, the end is where it gets interesting. I don't know where this red's coming from. So let's get our gray before we spread shit around too much. Okay. Just stick in there. Let's go over to the top here. in there. I'm just gonna wait again for that shit to dry. Cause something happened there. But we can take our black and get it back in here where that red had spilled earlier. Which is probably where we got it from now, but So that covers him. Ooh. The bear. I'm gonna do some wash here. Some wash here. And then the mouth. We'll get a, ooh, no. You're like, why didn't you just wait? It's an excellent question. Um, we're gonna get that up. We're fine, we're fine. Let me see now. We still need to let that dry a little bit more for his mouth. And the battery is almost dead. Let's just go to the 
Reckling Flesh for the golds here. Get the inside of here. Get this guy. Oops. We'll drop this whole thing. <laughs> Get this. This guy, the backs of these. Switch it over. This guy. This side here. Wash that. Get our flamethrower. That colors that. Now, we we'll take that, set it on here, just for like a quick mock up, and goodbye. We're gonna have to let this dry, so. Let that dry before we mess with it further. And then we'll cut back to it all put onto the guy and spinning. Um, but it's time to dry, and my phone's about to die. So, see you in a second. Okay, we're back, and I finished him up. I mounted it all together. Added like these the toxic mist blue to those little gems on him. Was able to wash the beard. Mouth is still a little janky. A little janky jank. But for the most part, we got ourselves a rune father. Oops. On Magma Draw. So as always, thanks for watching the video. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you do. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.